Yeah, so we get a lot of questions about what people actually need to be able to go off grid and set themselves up. So we just parked up here for lunch, so we thought now would be a great time just to run through what really the requirements are. So let's jump into it. Yeah, so to determine what you actually need uh, in your vehicle to be able to actually go off grid, you first need to uh, determine what actually appliances you want to take with you. So do you want to run one fridge, two fridges? Uh, do you want to take induction cooking with you? Do you want to have a microwave, coffee machine, all that type of thing? Uh, because that will really determine how much power you're going to need, like in battery power to be able to pull out of it. And then it will also determine other things about whether like, you need a lot of solar to come in, how much DC DC charging and that you need. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to do induction cooking, you've then got to look at all right, what induction cooker am I going to take? Is it 1600 watt, 1000 watt, 900 watt and so on? Same thing when it comes to like if you wanted to take a um, air fryer with you, they draw quite a lot of power, same as microwaves and then coffee machines. So really you'd look at all right, what's the highest appliance I want to take? Okay, it might be 2000 watts, so you know straight away, okay, I need a 2000 watt inverter. Or if you don't want to take any of those appliances and you just want to run uh, gas cooking, for example, no 240 volt appliances, then you don't need an inverter. And then that would really determine, really the inverter is the big thing that determines the battery power that you actually need. So if you weren't running an inverter, you just wanted to run like a one fridge, few camp lights, you could probably get away with a 100 amp hour battery. That would obviously determine on how much solar you got coming in, how often you want to stay parked up for. Uh, but if you wanted to do, say, a coffee machine and induction cooking, well, you're probably going to need 2,000, 3,000. And then if you want to run multiple of those appliances at once, you might need to go even higher again. So that's the first thing you really want to determine is what appliances I'm actually going to take with me. Now that you know that, you now want to determine, okay, how long do I want to be parked up for uh, without moving the vehicle? Because then you're just relying solely on battery power and then solar charge. Because if you're going to move every day, uh, and you're going to get that DC-DC charging coming in, you're going to be moving quite often. Uh, and for long periods of time, you can then rely on DC-DC charging from your alternator to charge up your battery power so you can go on the lower end of your batteries. But if you don't plan on doing that, you've been parked up for long periods of time, you can't rely on that DC-DC charge to come in. So you're going to be relying heavily on battery power and solar. So that's the other thing you need to consider. And then the other thing is just how much solar you can take with you. So we always recommend uh, trying to have as much solar as possible but if you're on a vehicle for example and you want to take surfboards or kayaks or something with you that's obviously going to limit how much fixed solar you can take so you might want to substitute that with some portable solar like some blankets but then if you flip it to a caravan most of the time you're not running anything on a caravan's roof so you can pretty much max that fully out so we always recommend that if you've got like a caravan or even a vehicle just max your solar charger out as much as possible because really the big cost in solar is gonna to come to that labor aspect of running the cables there. But if you're already running there one time for one solar panel, it's not gonna cost a huge amount extra to add an extra few solar panels on. So that's why we go, okay, you're already spending the money to get one solar panel. If you don't think you're gonna use any more of that roof space, let's go ahead and put more solar up there, get as much solar coming in. Cause then that might be able to substitute your DC DC charging. And you might go, okay, I only need a small DC DC charger now because I've got a lot of solar, means I don't have to upgrade my alternator, don't have to have multiple DC-DC charges and so on. So that's why we typically go, let's go most amount of solar. Then let's look at, okay, how much DC-DC can we get? And then let's look at batteries because batteries are obviously most expensive aspect and it's probably the cheapest thing that you can add on in the future without costing you a whole lot of extra. So like if you, for example, have one DC-DC charger on your system and then you want to add another one you're now going to have to run extra cabling from the alternator you're going to probably have to upgrade the alternator at a point later on so when you look at a battery for example to add another battery on is just bolt another battery in a couple extra cables to then go into the fuses and then you're good to go so you can easily add on batteries later but adding on solar and adding on dc dc later is a little bit more expensive so that's why we typically recommend going to them and then we'll look at the batteries now we need to look at the batteries so now that we know how much solar we're getting how much dc dc we're getting how long we're going to be parked up for and the appliances that we're going to actually be pulling out we now need to determine okay what battery power do i need to run those appliances so a 3000 watt inverter for example is going to require up to 300 amps of power to come out of your batteries. So if you went for a 100 amp battery or a 200 amp battery and it's got a constant discharge of only 200 amps, you can't run that 3000 multi 
uh, plus or inverter off it because it's pulling 300. So now you go, okay, I'm gonna have to have at least a 300 amp battery, potentially even more, so I can pull that amount of power out of the actual batteries. And now that we've done the batteries, now you need, the only other consideration you now gotta think about is AC charging. So do you wanna have the ability to be able to plug in, in a caravan park, be able to plug your vehicle in and be able to charge those batteries up, or be able to be able to leave your vehicle at home because maybe it's a dedicated tourer and you don't drive it that much, but you still wanna be able to run all your fridge to keep everything going, but you don't wanna deplete the batteries. So maybe you wanna be able to just be able to plug in at home and just leave your vehicle plugged in. And that way you know your, your battery is always topped up. So if you want AC charging, then that's another consideration you need to make. So you can get uh, units that we typically always uh, install, which is an inverter charger. So that's an inverter, obviously for your 240 volt power, then it's also the AC charger in built into one unit or you can get separate units. So if you wanted to go to a more simpler system or you potentially wanted to add AC charging in at a later date, you can get just a dedicated AC charger. But typically when we do it, we, we really start at that 240 volt side of things and decide, right, how much 240 volt power do we need? And then, okay, do we want AC charging? Okay, then we do. So we go, okay, inverter charger. And that's why typically for most of our um, installs, you will see that we do the MultiPlus uh, inverter charger just because it's a way simpler system to have one system that controls all your 240 instead of having to have multiple different ones. And it's a really smart system. So it'll look at, okay, do I have AC power coming in? Yes, I do, okay. I don't need to pull it from the batteries anymore. I'll pull it from the grid. And then it can also go, okay, well, you're pulling too much from the grid. You're asking for too much. Let me pull the rest from the batteries and we can keep going. And it just automatically does that all for you. You don't have to think about anything. You haven't got to switch on an AC charger, none of that stuff. You haven't got to flick a switch. It's just a super simple system. So that's why we'll typically go for it. But Sometimes you don't need AC charging, so then you could potentially just go for an inverter instead of an inverter charger. Yeah, so let's take this uh, vehicle setup for example. So in this one, it's a more simpler system. It's really just running a 85 liter Bushman upright fridge, a few cam lights inside, and then we just want to do a little bit of small induction cooking, charge some phones and that. So there's not a huge amount of requirements needed for power. So this has a 1200 VA MultiPlus in it. That's a Victron MultiPlus. So that's an inverter and charger. Uh, so it's a 1200 VA inverter, and it's also got a 50 amp AC charger in built into it. So when we do plug into shore power, we can get up to 50 amps of AC charging to come into our batteries. Uh, so it's just a nice, quick, easy way to be able to charge our batteries up quite quickly. And then we get still 1200 VAs, uh, which is probably about 1000 watt once it's um, converted in, because VA is total power, uh, which is more than enough to run an induction cooker. So a lot of the time you're probably only running your induction cooker at 900, max a thousand otherwise you end up just burning stuff to be honest so it's enough to be able to run that but if you do want to have a microwave or a um, big uh, air fryer it's not going to be powerful enough for that but it's well enough for this setup and then what that means is we can only need a 200 amp hour battery to be able to run the whole system and then inside there is the orion 50 dc dc charger coming from your alternator and then we've got 130 uh, mppt for a 200 what uh, solar blanket, solar panel on top of the roof there. And that's more than enough to be able to run this setup. We can run this fridge 24 seven and pretty much it keeps it topped up, never really drops. And then when you get that uh, DC DC charging coming in, which is driven most days, it's able to keep it topped up. And then it's also just got the BMV 712 uh, for the smart shunt in it. So then that way it's got a little gauge on the outside so you can constantly monitor what it's actually doing. And then it's also got the Bluetooth app. So you can just see everything via the Bluetooth app if you wanted to um, connect your smartphone to it. So that's all that we really needed for this one. We didn't need to go to a crazy setup for it, but then if you wanted to go down the caravan um, line and then you wanted to be able to say, run your AC uh, off grid and then not have to rely on shore power, then you're gonna need a bigger setup. So you're gonna need more solar. So then definitely for a, a caravan, we max out the solar as much as possible, get as much in. Uh, and then we look at our DC-DC charging. Usually it's only a smaller one because we don't want to go too big of DC-DC charging on a caravan because most likely it's going to be having a DC-DC charger on the vehicle as well for a small system on that, plus running the rest of the vehicle loads. We don't want to overload that alternator. So we typically only go for a 50 amp DC-DC charger for a caravan, max our solar out, and then we go for a bigger inverter. So it's usually a 3000 VA MultiPlus is what we'll go for. Uh, and that's enough to be able to run your AC off grid. And then you can also obviously run your microwave or your 240 volt appliances, no problem. But if you did want to run multiple appliances at once, then you probably would want to look to upgrade to a slightly bigger uh, inverter, maybe a 5 kVA instead of a 3 kVA, just so you can run all those appliances at once. But you just always have to keep in mind that that's also going to require a lot more battery power. So typically what we recommend for going off grid for a caravan is you're going to want that 3 kVA MultiPlus, max your solar out, 
50 amp DC DC charger, and then we usually go for 400 amp hours of battery power. That, for most people, is more than enough to set them up so they can go off grid for extended periods of time and have no issues. But if you do have a lot more power requirements, like you are going to plan on just say flat out living on out of the uh, van full time, then you might want to look to upgrade because by the time you add Starlink, you're running your internet 24 seven, then you're running all your lights, you're cooking constantly and you're living out of it, then you're probably going to need more than that. So we had a bus that we did one time, we put a 5 kVA uh, multi plus into that and then we also, it was a 24 volt system, so then we put three uh, 200 amp batteries in that, plus maxing out the solar and that's because they were full time gaming out of it, they're going to live out of off grid on the road constantly and they didn't have a DC DC charger so we went for a bigger system for them because they are going to be running that system quite hard but typically most caravans you're out most of the day you just run that AC to cool it down a little bit then you're doing a bit in cooking and that so 400 typically is more than enough but it's really a good starting base at it um, and you can start at 400 and then you can go and test to see how it goes. If you find that, oh, it's not actually quite enough, like I said before, it's quite easy to be able to add another battery in later down the line. It doesn't cost you a huge amount of extra. And it just saves you that cost at the, at the very beginning instead of going, oh, I think I need 600 and you go and spend all the money for 600 to come to find that you don't actually need it. So that's how we'll typically try to set it up. Uh, and then that way it can hopefully just save you a bit of cost and it doesn't make you uh, spend money that you necessarily might not have to spend. And then on the flip side of that, you might be someone that doesn't need any of that equipment because all they're really trying to run is just a small fridge like a draw fridge a 30 or 40 liter uh, and then a couple usb c points or just usb points or a couple cigarette sockets and you don't have a huge amount of demand for power so then you might only need a 100 amp hour battery and maybe a blanket and a small dc dc charger and then you're good to go to off grid so off grid doesn't necessarily mean oh you need this all this equipment to be able to go off grid some people can go off grid with literally just that little bit of equipment. It doesn't cost you a huge amount. You don't have to spend a heap of money uh, to be able to go off grid. Uh, so you definitely want to consider what you actually need. And that's why it really comes down to the core on trying to work out first what you actually want to take when you're actually off grid because you don't want to get sucked into what you see on Instagram and on social media quite a lot where people are just putting these massive systems into their vehicles because you might not actually need that for yourself. And we get that quite a lot where we tell people like, you only really need this, this, and this. You don't need to spend the amount of money to be able to do it. And it just saves a lot of money in the upfront. So you might only need a 100 amp hour battery and then a small uh, DC DC charger and all of a sudden you're off grid. It just really depends on what you're actually trying to achieve when you go out and about, and that will really determine what you're actually after. Yeah, so in summary, when you're trying to set yourself up for off grid, you really want to determine first uh, the key thing we always look at is the 240 volt power. That is the biggest draw on your battery system. Uh, so that's why we really always start at 240 and we determine, okay, do you want 240? If the answer is no, obviously it simplifies things quite quickly. Uh, but if the answer is yes, then we go, okay, what's the biggest draw you're going to have on it? Is it an AC system in your caravan? Is this an uh, induction cooker? Or is it just to be able to charge a few small phones and that? So once we understand what 240 volt power you actually require, that will then pretty much tell us straight away what type of battery we're going to need because if you don't have 240 volt power you could probably go straight to 100 depending on obviously the rest of your setup and what potentially you think your future plans are that would tell you straight away your battery but if you've got like a 2000 watt inverter or a 3000 watt inverter that pretty much would tell you straight away how much battery power you need because the way we typically usually will work it out is if you have a 3000 uh, VA or 3000 watt inverter, you want at least 300 amp hours of battery. 2000, you want 200, 1000, you want 100. And the reason for that is because it draws usually, uh, give or take, probably slightly less, like if it's 2200 amps, so then you need to be able to pull at least 200 amps out of your battery. You can get 100 amp hour batteries these days that you can pull 200 out of them constantly. Obviously, you're just gonna drain that battery really quickly. Uh, you drain it pretty much in half an hour. So we typically go, okay, well, if you want to be able to run this inverter uh, so that you can run these appliances, you probably want to run that appliance for at least one hour before your battery is fully dead. So to be able to do that, you're pretty much out of a 2000 going to be pulling nearly 200 amps. So then that's a 200 amp battery, one hour it's fully um, flat. So that's why we typically will stage it that way. But then you really just want to consider after that what you're going to actually do in the future because if for example you don't plan on running induction cooking right now but you might want it in the future but you've only got a small setup maybe the 100 amp hours like the 100 amp hours would be enough for you now but it's probably not going to do you in the future because as soon as you go to that 2000 watt inverter 
Yes, you can get away with 100, but it's gonna drain it so quickly that pretty much you probably want at least a 200 on it. And then you gotta go, okay, well, I can add another 100 amp hour battery to get me to 200. But then the problem might be is, oh, well, I'm actually using that induction cooking more than what I thought. 200 is not enough because I want it to last me longer than an hour. So then you might go, okay, I might actually want 300 or 400. But then to do that in banks of 100 just really starts to limit you. You really start to take up so much battery space really for just a lot of small batteries. So then we'll go, okay, probably, let's probably go with 200. Uh, and then the benefit to be able to doing that is then we usually try to go on banks of 200 from then. So then if you go, say, for a caravan, and you need 400, 400 amp hours of battery, instead of going for one big 400 amp battery, we usually go for two 200s. And the reason for that is, firstly, you get redundancy in it. So if you ha ever had an issue with your 400 amp battery and you lost power, that's it, you got no power because your battery's gone down. But if you had two 200s and one of those batteries went down, yes, you've halved your battery power, but you've still got a little bit of battery power. So it just gives you that redundancy. And then the other thing you might find is 400 isn't enough for you. It was enough for an extended period of time, but now maybe all of a sudden you've got an extra person using your appliances and you're drawing more power, 400 is no longer enough. If you've got a big 400 amp hour battery, uh, you have to go another 400. You can't mix batteries just like you can't mix solar. So then you stuff to go, okay, well now I need two 400s, but I don't need 800 amp hours of battery power but you have no choice. Where if you had two 200s, you can now quite easily go, okay, let's add another 200 amp hour battery. Now I've got 600, perfect. I didn't have to go and spend all this money to get another 400 amp hour battery when all I was really after was just an extra 200. So that's why we typically go in that direction instead of going to the one big battery. And then the other benefit to it is, is obviously if you have one big battery, trying to find the space available to be able to house that one battery can be difficult sometimes where you might be able to put a 200 over there, 200 over there, you might be able to just, distribute the weight on your van or your vehicle a little bit better. And then that way you haven't got this one big bit of weight in one area. Uh, so it's just a few extra benefits to it. And that's why we usually go down that route. So I hope this gave you some ideas of what you might need to be able to set yourself up to go off grid. Drop a comment below and let us know what's that one piece of gear that you can't go off grid without. And if you need any further help, uh, head over to our website where you can get in contact with us and we'll catch you in the next one.